Microplastics in your food. The hidden danger you're eating and how to avoid it. Plastics are everywhere, and it's a huge problem. However, we tend to only think of this as a pollution issue when, in fact, plastics are now so common, they're making their way into our bodies. For instance, a study published in 2023 brought to light the alarming release of microplastics and nanoplastics from common plastic containers many of us use in our microwaves. But that's really just a small part of the problem. And it's something everyone, especially seniors, need to be aware of. In this video, we dive into the alarming truth about microplastics in our food supply. Learn how these tiny particles are infiltrating everything from seafood to fruits and vegetables, the potential health risks they pose, and most importantly, practical tips to reduce your exposure. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for vital information about how you can stay happy and healthy no matter your age. What are microplastics? Thanks to studies like the one we just mentioned, you might be hearing a lot about microplastics nowadays, but what exactly are they? Put simply, this is the word used for plastic particles measuring less than five millimeters in diameter. Microplastics are categorized into two main types, primary and secondary. Primary microplastics are intentionally manufactured for products like cosmetic exfoliants, detergents, or industrial abrasives. These also include microfibers that are shed from synthetic fabrics during washing. Secondary microplastics, on the other hand, typically derive from the breakdown of larger plastic items that have been discarded improperly, like bags and water bottles. Due to their small size, microplastics have infiltrated virtually every part of our environment, including the air. And since they are so hard to see, many small animals will digest them by accident. These, in turn, will be digested by larger animals, eventually making their way into our food chain. Primary sources of microplastics. Perhaps the most worrying thing about microplastics is just how pervasive they are in our food supply. One of the most significant sources of microplastics is seafood. Given that there are approximately 24 trillion pieces of microplastic in the ocean, it's no surprise that fish and shellfish ingest these particles at a near constant rate. In fact, studies estimate that an average person consumes around 53,864 microplastic particles per year through seafood alone. This is the equivalent of eating 17 credit cards each year. But it doesn't end there. Another common source of microplastics is tea, specifically tea bags. Though they might appear to be a type of fabric, many tea bags are actually made from plastic. When steeped in boiling hot water, they can release a staggering number of microplastic and nanoplastic particles into your drink. Even fruits and vegetables, which are usually considered some of the healthiest foods, aren't safe from microplastic contamination. Because microplastics and nanoplastics are everywhere in our environment, they can enter plants through their root systems ending up in the flesh, leaves, and seeds. And keep in mind, these are natural foods. Those microwavable frozen meals you buy at the grocery store are basically just microplastic delivery devices. Which brings us to the big question, are microplastics dangerous? While most microplastics are expelled from the body through our natural digestive process, recent studies suggest that some can become lodged in human tissues raising concerns about their long-term health effects. One 2023 study found microplastic particles in the hearts of cardiac surgery patients, suggesting that they can penetrate vital organs and accumulate over time. Some doctors are finding microplastics in blood clots from stroke and heart attack patients. And there's more. The chemicals used in the production of plastics, including BPA, BPS, and BPF, have been directly linked to disruptions in the endocrine system. On top of that, they can also interfere with hormone regulation and development. And while there's still more research to be done, current studies indicate that high concentrations of microplastics can damage cells, potentially leading to inflammation, immune responses, and several long-term health problems. What can we do about it? 
There are several practical steps you can take to reduce your exposure to microplastics and their potential health risks in your daily life. One, limit the use of plastic packaging. One of the most effective ways to minimize microplastic exposure is to reduce the use of plastic packaging. Whenever possible, choose alternatives such as glass, stainless steel, or ceramic containers for storing food and beverages, as they do not release harmful particles when heated or reused. Additionally, aim to avoid single-use plastics like bottles, straws, utensils, and plastic bags, which are major contributors to plastic pollution. Two, avoid heating food in plastic. Using plastic containers to heat food can cause the plastic to break down and release microplastics into your meal. That's why you should transfer food to glass or ceramic containers before microwaving to avoid this. Keep in mind that even containers labeled as microwave safe can still release harmful particles when exposed to heat. If you must eat microwavable meals or frozen dinners that come in plastic packaging, transfer them to a non-plastic dish to prevent microplastic contamination. Three, drink filtered water. Bottled water is a major source of microplastic exposure as it contains far more microplastics than tap water. To reduce this risk, switch to drinking filtered tap water. You might also consider using a water filter with a carbon block or reverse osmosis system, which can help remove microplastics and other contaminants. Four, minimize consumption of seafood. We've already covered how marine life, especially fish and shellfish, are ingesting microplastics from polluted oceans, which can then be passed on to humans. Reducing your consumption of seafood, particularly shellfish like mussels and oysters, can help lower your intake of microplastics. If you choose to eat seafood, opt for farm-raised options first. Five, choose natural fibers. When washed, synthetic fibers like polyester and nylon shed microplastics, known as microfibers. These microfibers often end up in water systems, contributing to environmental pollution and eventually finding their way into the food chain. To reduce this, you should try to wear clothing made from natural fibers like cotton, wool, or hemp. It feels like going backward, but it seems the old ways were the best ways after all. Six, be cautious with personal care products. Many personal care products, including exfoliants, toothpaste, and cosmetics, contain microbeads, a type of microplastic. To avoid them, check product labels for ingredients like polyethylene, which is often abbreviated as PE, or polypropylene, which is often abbreviated as PP. When possible, try to choose products that use natural alternatives such as salt, sugar, or oats as exfoliants. Seven, be informed and spread awareness. Finally, you should make efforts to stay informed about the latest research on microplastics and share this information with your peers. The more people who understand the risks associated with microplastic exposure, the more likely it is that real change will occur. Some companies are producing plastics that don't degrade into microplastics, but it could take some time before they see widespread adoption. The sad truth is that microplastics have become a hidden danger in our food supply, infiltrating everything from seafood and beer to fruits, vegetables, and even tea. Although the long-term health effects of ingesting these particles are not fully understood, the research we have suggests it's worth taking steps to limit exposure. By making just a few small changes, you can significantly reduce the amount of microplastics you consume and help protect your health. Please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video. We are constantly putting out fun videos on everything related to wellness. Please remember, this video is meant for educational purposes and is not medical advice.